What's going on everybody? MSD here back with another video on Marvel Contest of Champions. I was inspired by watching Legacy's account tour video. I realized I haven't done an account tour in a really long time. So I figured might as well start 2024 off with a tour of my main account. I probably will make a free to play account tour at some point. I know I've done those in the past. So that tentative plans for that one, let's just say. But yeah, I wanted to do uh, a main account tour. I was inspired by my good buddy Lagsy doing one, and I enjoyed watching that. So yeah, let's kind of go over the gist of the account. So I've been playing Marvel Contest of Champions for a little over eight years now. I haven't been playing since launch. I believe I started in November of 2016. So I started a little before the one-year anniversary of the game. Um... It was towards the end of November, so I was getting close, but I've been playing since the, the November 26th, maybe, of 2016. Somewhere around that is when I started playing, and I really haven't taken any considerable breaks. I mean, reasonable amounts of time, like a week, two weeks, because I can't play because of either a, a trip a vacation, some other priority taking place, whatever the case may be, yeah. But I haven't taken any long hiatus from the game, like anything longer than a month. Really haven't done anything like that. At least not that I can remember. Maybe when I first started, I didn't play as often or I wasn't playing every day. But nowadays, I'm definitely doing something on a weekly, bi-daily basis. Sometimes it's not every day, but for the most part, I am trying to make something or prepare something for the days to come. So yeah, I've been playing for over eight years, and it's been a great experience. So many long-lasting friendships and relationships have been built from this, and I cannot wait to continue building those out and making hopefully new ones going forward and just having a great time. So that's kind of the backstory of the account. Let's take a look at... Let's look at the, the profile first. So here's here's what I see when I look at my top profile. I have 5.1 million hero rating, so I just crossed over 5 million recently. I don't think it was too long ago when I was teetering at 4.9. So I think probably Necropolis and then some of the Cyber Weekend deals pushed me over the 5 million mark. And Ascensions as well. Ascensions bump prestige or bump a hero rating up by a substantial amount. So this is what I see when I, I look at my top four. I have my rank three Shuri up at the top of the profile, and then my Ascended Doom, Quicksilver, and Kate Bishop. I'm rocking the Nameless Grandmaster profile picture. Very unlikely that I will change that anytime soon. Really love that profile picture. Feel I have a special connection with that profile picture. And my title, again, very unlikely that I change this title. This is the title that I got when I won the tournament in 2019. I think the only way that I would change this title is if I tried to and successfully won another tournament. So maybe like 2024, there's another tournament. If I want to try and win that one, there's a title associated with it, then I would probably switch. But if I don't decide to do that and if something like that doesn't happen, this title is my forever title. And it will always be the most special title that I own because I earned this one. You know, I earned it outside of the confines of just my own game. You know, I actually went to a place, I competed, and I won for it. And, of course, the trophy and all that. But this is like the in-game recognition that, you know, that's what you did. So, yeah, Champions Champion, my favorite title, and will almost certainly never leave my profile unless, I don't know, I happen to win another tournament. But, yeah, that's the title and the profile picture. Let's just jump straight into the Champions. I know I'm not following lags lags order and like what he showed i kind of want to go champions then content i know he kind of did it in reverse a little bit so you know add a little flair a little spice a little difference in our our roster and account reviews so let's start with the seven stars because that's the new hot topic nowadays seven star champions they didn't exist last year i would show you a reference of what my seven star roster was like um, in 2022, I'm saying last year as if it was 2023. They didn't exist in 2022. Seven Stars only came out in 2023. So there is no reference photo. They've only been out for less than a year at this point. I don't exactly remember when they officially released. I think it was towards the beginning of 2023. But they haven't been out for a full calendar year yet. And they've already made such a difference in the game, such an impact. Their power is... Hitherto undreamt of. It really is, to, to quote Doctor Strange from Infinity War. 
The power level they have is ridiculous. Even a rank one seven star in certain situations is more potent than the six star rank five equivalent in terms of damage. Sig level, of course, is always going to be a very important factor and that's why certain six stars will have longevity over their seven star uh, counterparts. But champions that don't need high sig or you can get them to a higher rank and then have them at a lower sig will be significantly more potent than the, the six star counterpart. Perfect example, I know it's a kind of a strange one, but Red Goblin, I only have him at SIG 20, but the rank two seven star power level with the challenger rating, stat focus, and just the, the signature ability one time outperforms the six star rank five in a lot of situations, just based on the, the power creep of the base stats, the stat focus, the challenger rating. The seven star rank two is going to outperform the six star rank five. Now, of course, the six star rank five ascended, probably more of an even playing field. But regardless, the, the seven star rank two Red Goblin is what I'm going to be sticking to whenever I use Red Goblin. I will not be going back to my six star rank five. Even though I had such a great time using my six star rank five, I won't be ascending him. I'll be sticking to this guy going forward. So that's kind of my thought process with seven stars. If they don't need high sig, chances are I am going to invest in them over the six star counterpart nine times out of 10. So let's take a look at my high ranking seven stars. So rank threes, I only have two, my Valiant rank ups, my seven star Shuri and my Sunspot. Fun fact, I was the first person in the world to have a rank three seven star Sunspot. I said that on a stream uh, earlier this month and people thought I was the first rank three Sunspot in the world, like the guy who had the first rank three, it also happened to be Sunspot. I was not the first rank three, but my, the I was the first rank three seven star Sunspot. I got that confirmed uh, internally because people were doing runs on day one and just wanted to know. So yeah, I was the first rank three Sunspot in the world. So that's kind of a cool little factoid. He's still unawakened, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And then Shuri, of course, my my Necropolis content queen, her and Kate Bishop. Shuri has done so well for me uh, across so many different content landscapes. Battleground, she's great. Necropolis, she's great. Story content, she's great. She's really just a jack of all trades. I mean, fantastic champion. Unbelievable awakened ability. So potent. Just at Sig 1. You know, of course, there is no awakening gen for 7 stars yet. But... Block unblockable specials, just straight up when you're awakened. That's it. I mean, fantastic awakened ability. Doesn't even need it, but benefits strongly, especially in Necropolis content where you're trying to survive for a long period of time. She definitely benefits from it quite a bit. So those are my rank three seven stars. Let's look at my rank twos. I just took up my 12th a few days ago from the Road to the Crypt rewards. A few days ago to certain people might not be as relevant now, but in January, the Road to the Crypt Rewards came out and I took Domino up to rank two. I pulled her back to back from seven star basics, so it just seemed like the right choice to take to rank two. She's a great dual threat and having a SIG 40 seven star Domino never never hurt anybody. Well, didn't hurt, didn't hurt me, but it might hurt somebody else that's fighting her. <laughs> so yeah, Domino, happy to have her up at rank two. I'm, I'm pleased with all of my rank twos, really. There are some champions that I want to get a little more use out of, specifically Mr. Negative. I haven't found a great use for him yet. I'm hoping that in a future Battlegrounds meta or maybe future content, I get to use him more because I really do like Mr. Negative. And I ranked him up with the sole purpose of training myself how to use him well. You know, I want to effectively use him. Awakening him kind of it was the, the final piece of the puzzle for me and wanting to invest in him. So I took him up with the the purpose of learning how to use him. And I've gotten significantly better, but I am nowhere near a Mr. Negative Pro. But I, I've used him from time to time, and I have relative success when using him. Uh, of course, we have the Maestro that everybody gets from 100% Necropolis. He's been great. Really like him on offense. He's a bit underrated on offense, and I look forward to the day we can get him awakened almost certainly going to be some kind of Necropolis Karina challenge where we get an additional copy of Maestro. So I look forward to that. That's going to be really fun. And then, yeah, I've got the Killmonger here. Let's look at two specific, two fun ones, I guess, aside from the Titania, who I love. Uh, Iron Man. Iron Man I pulled from the Titan Crystal twice. So 
Two out of my five Titan Crystals, I believe I've opened five, have been Iron Man. Now, when I first got Iron Man, it was during the uh, Vancouver trip, during the Brawl. I was opening Crystals with Lags, Bitter, and Andy. We were at our Airbnb before we went out to meet up with the rest of the guys. And we were all opening like Titan Crystals and Seven Stars. It was a huge opening. And that's when I got Iron Man first. So I wasn't super thrilled with getting him for the, for the first time because I had just taken my six star Iron Man to rank four. Not rank five, so luckily I didn't invest any further, but I had just taken him to rank four. And I was a little salty about pulling him because it was my first Titan pool pull, my first Titan character and it wasn't really going to be used because I had a counterpart that was essentially identical who had the awakened ability. Now fast forward a little bit, I don't exactly remember when, I think it was maybe around July 4th, somewhere around there, I'm not exactly sure. No, no, it couldn't have been July 4th, what am I talking about? It was after Vancouver, it was, I think it was Cyber Weekend, again, where I got, um, I got a few more Titan Crystals and then I awakened Iron Man. So getting the awakened ability, even though it's coming from a Titan Crystal, it's very good for Iron Man. It gives him so many more pieces of utility. It fills in so many more like niches and gaps in his kit. It gives him the armor potency, it gives him the regen. Uh, it doubles the block proficiency during the opponent's special attack. So right now he has you know, 4,100 block proficiency. So you get him one time awakened and boom, that goes up to 82. Crazy. He's such a tank. And he's just, he's been very impressive recently. I've been using him in story content. I really want to use him in the next cycle of raids. He seems to be an incredible champion for that. And I cannot wait to use him going forward. So I'm very thrilled about my Iron Man now. Now that I have him awakened up at rank two, very happy to have him. And then one more before I move on to the rest of my roster. Um, I'll, I'll glaze over the, the rank ones. But my seven star Shocker. Shocker is my favorite tech champion in the entire game. Right up there with Shuri. I, I, it's back and forth. It teeters between who I like more. It really just depends on the day. But Shocker, I was so thrilled that he was coming to the game as a seven star. And I'm beyond happy I was able to pull him because... He will almost certainly be my next rank three, depending on what happens with Act 8, depending on what happens with the rank three that comes from Act 8. If we can choose, it's I'm choosing Shocker. If we can, it's going to be a crystal, it, you know, luck with a draw. But Shocker, absolute favorite tech champion, one of my favorites from 2023. I think Kate Bishop, Shocker, and... Uh, I'd have to look at the rest of the 2023 squad, but Kate Bishop, Shocker, definitely both up there. Yeah, who else from 2023? And then maybe Adam Warlock. He's he's one of my favorites as well. Oh, Onslaught. Kate Bishop, Shocker, Onslaught. Yeah, there you go. Those would be my favorites from 2023. But then looking at the rest of my roster, I have a really decent spread of rank 1 7 stars. Lots of champs that I want to invest in, just to rattle off a few. Mangog, Terax, Hulk. Howard the Duck, Overseer, who I just awakened from a Valiant Daily Crystal. Crazy, crazy stuff. Um, Ma, Wiccan, Lady D, Adam, America Chavez, who I got from the Crypt, almost certainly Gamora, and then if I can awaken Joe Fixit, I would take him up. So I'm pretty happy with my, my seven-star roster so far. Let's move on to the six stars. Let's look at, let's not send anybody right now. Let's look at the six-star rank five champions I have. What, 18 six-star rank fives? Yeah, 18 with my most recent being Onslaught, I believe. I think he was the one I just took up recently. Yeah, I'm happy with most of my six-star rank fives. There are some that I definitely don't use as often as I would like. I think the number one champion who fits that mold is Danny Moonstar. I do use her, but I don't use her nearly as often as I like initially was when I first got her. I was using her a ton when I had first gotten her, brought her to rank four, using her a lot. But then as time goes on, you know, I ended up taking her out of my Battlegrounds deck and certain times, yes, I did miss her and I did throw her back in and she was being used, but a lot of other times she just kind of got tossed to the side. I hope the rebalance makes her better for Battlegrounds overall, like Nick Fury specifically was her target matchup. So I'm hoping that that makes her better. 
But yeah, maybe I have to give Danny another chance. I also have the seven star, so it hurts a little bit to keep using the six star, especially when she only really needs the one time dupe as a seven star. And then I would certainly invest in the seven star Danny if I got her awakened. But everyone else I use quite a bit. I have eight ascensions waiting on a ninth. I don't know if I'm going to ascend white tiger yet. I said I would, but I'm thinking about it still. I have to get my hands on her on the live server and make a decision then. But yeah, I have Doom Ascended, and then Quicksilver, Kate, Onslaught, Tiger, Zemo, Absorbing Man, who's my most recent, and then Apocalypse. So very happy with all of my ascensions. I use them all frequently. Maybe not APOC as much, but I will use APOC. APOC will always be useful, so to get him to that max power level is never a bad idea. And then, yeah, some other champions I'd like to ascend in the future. If we don't see a 7-star She-Hulk, she'll absolutely go up. And Valkyrie will also make her way up there for sure. Adam Warlock, I have him as a 7-star, so I'm not going to take him up. And then Wolf, kind of the same thing. If I get him as a 7-star, not going to take him up. And then I'll show off the rank 4s, and then I'll just move on to other stuff because everything else below there is really not worth looking at. I think I have 33. Yeah, 33 rank 4s. There's lots of champions here that I do want to invest in to a rank 5 and ascension level. Kingpin is one of them. Iceman. Hulkling, Nick Fury, probably throw what's his face, uh, future Ant Man up there, absolutely. Lots of champions here that I want to invest in more. Photon as well, if I can't pull her as a seven star. Lots of champs here that I really like. I can't really point out one in particular that hasn't been super effective for me. I will say that I don't use Kitty Pride really at all. I just have her at rank four for the eventual situation where she is useful for something, or maybe she's the best option for something. I'm not a super big fan of Kitty. I don't like the reliance on having to go for a full screen dash to get your phase going. I don't like being limited to medium intercepts. That's why I like um, Absorbing Man a lot and why I would love to get Kushala because all of her effects are based on just intercepts in general. So it doesn't have to be just medium. It can be medium, light, heavy, special, whatever the case may be. So that's one of the reasons I don't use Kitty that much, but you know, I, I know she's great. I know she's broken and stuff, yada, yada. But yeah, upcoming rank fives, probably Hulkling, I would say, is gonna make his way up there for sure. Nick Fury as well. I think those two are the most immediate for next rank fives. I don't exactly have any other champions that I'm looking to take up right away or as quickly as I would want to take those two up. So yeah, that's my, that's my top roster. Let's take a look at some content. I have done every single piece of content that is available, end game content. I finished up Necropolis. That was pretty fun, really liked Necropolis. The Grandmaster, arguably my favorite fight in the game right now, and there's some Necropolis fights just on their own in there that I really enjoy and will certainly make a trip back to visit at some point for the sake of content or just for personal enjoyment because Necropolis is really fun content. Uh, Abyss, kind of old news at this point, but I still bully the Collector every once in a while. As long as I'm breathing, the Collector will never be safe from me. That's all I really have to say about Abyss. But yeah, Necropolis was fantastic. Eternity of Pain, which I almost forget was at the beginning of 2023. It feels like so long ago when Eternity of Pain came out that looking back at the videos, it's within like the year, or within last year is when it came out, even though it's at the beginning, it was wild to think about. Like I thought Eternity of Pain was the end of 2022, or at least that's when my memory was perceiving Eternity of Pain to have come out. But yeah, Eternity of Pain Acceptance was 2023. That was last year. So that content was great. The Karina challenges involved with that type of content. Loved them. Thought they were challenging, but pretty fair. I mean, you definitely needed certain characters to be able to complete some of them, like whether it was immunities or certain type of utility you needed to counter. Now, I do think it was watered down a little bit because you can just herk the first four fights and not get penalized for it. I think that kind of lessened the intensity of it. I think it would have been way more intense, way more skill intensive if you needed to do every single fight with the objective champions. And then maybe you could swap in another objective champion. And that would that would make it a lot more fair, a lot more reasonable. But 
that was that was an argument a year ago, so I'm not going to worry about that nowadays. But Eternity of Pain was great, and Necropolis, my favorite piece of content that they've ever released. Yeah, Necropolis, good stuff. Let's look at story content. Again, I am caught up everywhere in story content. Just waiting for 8.4, the conclusion of Act 8 to drop. I'm very excited for that. I'm hoping it comes out in March. I know that is very optimistic with how things are going right now. I'm assuming it's going to be April, but fingers crossed it's March. We haven't heard anything, and typically we hear about the content about two months in advance, so I'm thinking we'll probably hear about it in February or hear about a release date, you know, maybe the introduction of the special boss on a Kabam live stream. We haven't heard any of that yet, so I'm thinking it will be April, which is a little, little unfortunate. I wanted it to be a little more, a little more recent, a little, a little sooner, but what are you going to do? It is what it is. I've enjoyed Act 8 so far. I think it is pretty easy, and I think that's kind of the intent. It's not supposed to be difficult content anymore. It's supposed to be fun and interactive. Not the sarcastic version of that, but actually fun and interactive story content with unique and challenging bosses at the end of each chapter. I think that's a great method to keep following for story content going forward. Like, Serastes was fine. Serastes may have been a little too easy. I think Bahamut was great, very well designed, just a bit of a long fight. And then, what's her name? Black Widow Cytalis was kind of in the middle where she she was still fun, but she was easily, easily countered by any champion with prowess. It like wasn't even funny. But Act 8 as a whole, and the special bosses that come with Act 8, they've been good. They've been fun. I've enjoyed the content. I actually like how they've reduced the paths required for the content. I don't think that's... A bad thing going forward I think it's just going to reward the engagement of the content more because you have to do less to earn more because originally it's six paths now it's three paths so if you really want to motivate somebody to get in there do the content get the rewards cut the paths and they did so I know people miss having to do all those paths I get that we've all had to go through it through you know act six and act seven and it was fun but I personally like the change to the paths. If you don't, that's fine, totally fair. I respect that opinion 100%, super valid. But I like the changes to the paths and I'm glad it takes a little less time and you can kind of enjoy it within its own little bubble. It doesn't have to be spread across a super long amount of time. It can be its own little little moment and it's a fun moment, you know? What else to look at? I guess we go to the inventory. Not much to really, not much to really see here. I guess I don't have any champion items now. Okay. Um, what is this? Four six star generic waking gems. Another fun fact I actually have a picture to pull up here. Uh, I was the first person in the world to have a six star awakening gem of any kind. This was one of the main prizes for winning the tournament in New York in 2019, was the first ever six star awakening gem. So I have the screenshot from that moment or for, uh, for, from when I claimed the gem, because they had given me like this card to claim it. So yeah, I was the first person in the world to have a six star waking gem, so that's pretty cool. So now, they're a lot more common nowadays, but back then, you know, a few years ago, six star gems, they, they didn't even exist until then. And then Abyss came out a few months later, and then gems started to crop up after that. But before then, it was the, the first introduction of it. So a little, a little another fun fact for you there. I have some Ascension Dust still. Again, I'm waiting on that. Not exactly sure what I want to do with that right now. Thinking White Tiger, but I'm not locked in on that decision. And I have a SIG 200 gem as well that I'm also waiting on. And yeah, I mean, there's nothing really to, to look at in terms of catalysts. I've got some, some Tier 6 Basic and some Tier 3 Alpha just awaiting whatever champion I decide to take up to rank 4 next. Maybe that is White Tiger. Maybe that is like a Bullseye if I get him and not White Tiger. And, and I want to invest in him over White Tiger. Who knows? But yeah, we've got some catalysts here. I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, three of these Mystic and four of these Science. So I guess I can talk about my plans a little bit for those because those are the only two catalysts that have any substance. So when it comes to my my Mystic and Science roster. It's really looking like Overseer is going up for Science. It's between Overseer and Hulk. Awakening Overseer is a really important thing for him. The signature ability, of course, he likes to have the high sig, 
but just having it with the seven star stats it's very very potent so i'm happy to have overseer awaken and it's between him and hulk for rank two and then mystic i have so many mystics now like if you look at my my seven star mystic roster gotta remove the science one yeah i have nine seven star mystic champions now ideally in a perfect world i open a seven star in a few days because once raids are over i'll have another seven star in a perfect world i get juggernaut or sasquatch that's a perfect world if not then it's between chavez maw and probably mangog mangog is awakened so that helps his case a little bit, and I've always wanted to take Mangog up. I've, I've had a soft spot for him. But Chavez, it's kind of hard to deny Chavez, especially because of how often I run Kate Bishop. So she's definitely an option. But yeah, Juggernaut or Sassy, those are the champs. Those are the champs I want the most out of the basic. It's Juggernaut, Sassy, and Warlock. It's those three that I want more than anybody. And then like Venom is probably four. And yeah, I don't even know who else is really up there. Maybe some dupes that I haven't thought about. But yeah, I think that's about it. I'll show off my masteries. I know people frequently ask about masteries, so let me show off what I'm currently running. This is typically what I run at all times. I have recoil unlocked, but I'm never running it unless it's for some special challenge or whatnot. So this is my offense tree. This is my defense tree. Gotta love three out of three inequity. Big fan of that. And then proficiencies. Yeah, that's basically it. So yeah, guys, I think that's gonna do it. We've almost gone for 30 minutes here, but you know, an account tour takes a long time. Got a big, big account. Okay, I don't have a big account, but I got a nice account. You know, it's not like humongous, but in the tiers, it's like, here's the top, right? Hold on. Here's the top. He, like, I'm like here, you know? Like 80%, 75% towards the top. You know, not the tippy tippy top, but yeah, end game account. Takes a while to go through. So yeah, guys, I think that's going to do it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this 2024 main account tour. Be on the lookout for a free-to-play account tour. We're going on year number three of the free-to-play account. Very happy with how all of that has gone. And you'll definitely see the, the joy that I have with that account when I make that video. So yeah, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you have not already. I upload every single day, so be on the lookout. Turn on notifications. And yeah. See you in the next one. Peace.